Okay, so we're finally beginning to see some light at the end of this INAV tunnel. So let's connect to the flight controller one more time. And this time go to the programming tab that I've been kind of avoiding for a while now. So in here, we can define various logic conditions that trigger actions in the flight controller. So what kind of things would we want to do here? Well, one thing I encountered was at one time I accidentally disarmed my airplane in flight. And that was an interesting experience to learn how to rearm my airplane before it made contact with Mother Earth. And I would like to avoid that in the future. So one thing I want to do here is define a logic condition that would prevent me from disarming my airplane while it's in flight. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at what we have here in the UI. Each line here is a single line of operations that the flight controller can check to trigger various operations. So the first thing I want to do, I want to create a new operator here, or new operation. So I'm going to enable this by default. And if the condition that is specified here is true, the status will turn blue. So this dot should turn blue. So this kind of indicates a true or false condition, or active or inactive, zero, one. It's a Boolean sort of thing, true or false. If this operation returns a true value, then the status turns blue. So what, it, what this operation is saying is it's just asserting a true value. And this is saying that this line is always active. So the flight controller is going to execute this line, evaluate it. So why isn't the status turned blue here? If we're just asserting a true, then the output should be true. Well, the thing is, I've only defined this in the UI yet. The flight controller doesn't have this in it yet. I haven't saved it. So I actually have to save the program that I'm seeing here, that I'm writing, in order for it to take effect. So if I click Save now, you can see that that status turned blue. That's because now this code per se is in the flight controller and it has evaluated this line and it has determined that it is true. Well, that's just because we're asserting a true here. This is the default setting. So under this operation, I want to do something different than just asserting true. So let's see what we've got. Well, one thing I want to do is I want to check to see if my airplane is flying. So how could I do that? Well, one way I could do that is to check my ground speed. I don't have an airspeed indicator, so I'm just going to go by ground speed. Now, INAV does compute an airspeed, I believe, but I'm just not going to rely on that. I'm going to go by the ground speed, even if I'm hit, facing a headwind. I'm relatively convinced that my plane is flying if it's moving more than 15 miles an hour. So let's just see if my ground speed is greater than 15 miles an hour. Well, to do that, I want to check a condition that see if A is greater than B. And what this does is sets up these operands so that it will check, it will compare whatever value I specify in operand A with whatever value I specify in operand B to see if operand A is greater in value. If it is, then this status will turn blue. This status view that we're seeing right here is stale from the previous true condition. So this, has, this isn't actually being evaluated yet. Because zero is not greater than zero, that would be false. So that should be empty. But we haven't saved it. I could save it to demonstrate that it should turn false because zero is not greater than zero. So now we can see that that's working. But like I said, I want to check my ground speed. So I want to go to this flight option here to select an attribute of the flight controller. Notice in here that all these values that you can choose from are represented in metric values. Centimeters, meters, um, that's all I'm seeing, centimeters, meters. Even though I have configured the INAV configurator to use imperial values, under the hood everything is computed as metric. So this hasn't been surfaced here in accordance with the setting to represent imperial numbers. So unfortunately, we have to do conversions between imperial and metric if we're using imperial at all. So in here, I want to check the ground speed. And the ground speed is represented in centimeters per second. That seems kind of odd to me, but okay. 
So I computed that 670 centimeters, I believe, was based on 15 miles an hour. I don't know. I did this a while ago, so I'm not sure. But as long as my airplane is moving forward faster than 670 centimeters per second, I can assume it's flying. Well, I mean, technically, the airplane could be riding in the back of my car, and it would still detect this. So I have to keep that in mind, make sure I've unplugged and turned off my aircraft before I throw it in the car and go driving. Otherwise, this operation that I'm setting up here is going to arm it. <clears throat> so now, I, if I save that, this condition here is going to be false because my airplane is just sitting here quietly on my bench. It's not moving. So this isn't going to indicate that it is moving faster than 670 centimeters per second. But if it is, and when it is, I want to disable my arm switch so I can't disarm my airplane in flight. So I want to define another condition here. And by default, it's going to base this operation on the previous one. What that means is it will evaluate this condition if this operation is true. So right now this is false. So this, whatever I define here, will not get executed. Even if I define it as true, if I were to save this, it's just not going to show up here because it's dependent on this value. I'm saying this logic condition 1 is dependent on logic condition 0 being true. Well, it's not true. We got an empty bubble here. But anyway, what I want to do is disable my arming switch so that I can't disarm using the switch in flight. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm kind of going a, a roundabout way of doing that, kind of a backdoor um, brute force method by overriding the arming safety. So if my airplane is flying faster than 607, 670 centimeters per second, it will override arming safety. What does that mean? Well, this is going to override any safety check that INAV employs to determine whether or not it is safe to arm the aircraft. That includes the arming switch, GPS lock, Anything that would prevent you from arming the flight controller in the first place is completely bypassed. So by default, when you bypass that arming safety, the aircraft goes into an armed state. So as long as my airplane is moving faster than 670 centimeters per second, it will be armed. So now if I save this rule, I should be able to take my plane out to the field right now and fly safely without having the fear of accidentally disarming my aircraft in flight, because now I can't do it. So there's one condition. What if I have other things that I want to do? What kinds of things might that be? Well, another situation I find myself in is I have a head tracker to drive a pan servo on my camera, so I can move my head to point my camera. And the problem is, I have a switch programmed on my radio, not through iNav, to enable the head tracker. And oftentimes, after I enable the head tracker, I forget to disable before I land. But the problem is, when I come in to land, when I get close, I take off my goggles to obtain a visual contact of my aircraft so I can land at line of sight. The problem with that is if I take off my goggles, that affects my camera because the head tracker is on. So wherever I, my head's looking at the airplane, I'm not looking through the camera. I'm looking visually at my aircraft and turning my head. So my camera's going crazy. So at the end of a flight, when I download the video from my camera, I don't see a nice landing. I'm like looking off to the side somewhere. So what I'd like to do is automatically disable the head tracker when I get below a certain altitude. So that's another operation that I can pour, perform in here. So I'm going to create another operation here. I'm going to enable this operation number two or logic condition number two. And this time I want to check to see if the altitude is less than say 50 feet or 100 feet. So I want to 
check this lower than condition here and I want to check against another flight attribute above ground level. So in centimeters I need to specify if the airplane is below this flight level, this altitude, then I want to do something. So this check here will become true if my airplane is below 1,524 centimeters above the ground. And it is right now because it's sitting on my bench. But this condition is not indicating true because I have, again, I have not saved it yet. So if I save it, we can see that indeed it is detecting that my aircraft is below 1,524 centimeters and th therefore we get a true condition here. So I only want to check this if my aircraft is armed because I might want to use my head tracker on the bench. And if I'm using it on the bench, the aircraft is not going to be armed. So I want the head track to, to work. Well, if I'm sitting at my bench, I'm definitely under 1524 centimeters. So I don't want to disable my head tracker if I want to test it at the bench. So I really only want to check this condition if I am above or if my flight system is armed. So that's kind of an indication that my aircraft is either flying or getting ready to fly. Because I also maybe don't want my head tracker enabled on takeoff if it's enabled and I didn't know it. So what I want to do here is I want to check to see if my arming switch is set in the armed or even the return to home position since on my particular switch I have two functions on it. And that means it's going to be 1500 or above in the pulse width value. So I want to check if that value is greater than 1500. And what I'm checking is RC channel 5. So in here I can specify get RC channel and select channel 5. So that's the value for operand A. Whatever the value is currently set on channel 5, it will read that and compare it to whatever value I specify here. And I'm going to put 1400 just to give it a little headroom. Now this condition is dependent on this condition. Logic condition 2 is checking my altitude. And if I'm below a certain altitude, then it will do this check to see if it's armed. Right now, it says it's not armed. If I arm it, again, it still says I'm not armed because I haven't saved it yet. The flight controller does not know about this logic condition yet. So let's save that. And I can test it now by switching my arming switch. And you can see it's now armed. So it's below 1524 centimeters and it's armed. Now I disarm and now it's disarmed. So I want to check one more thing here. Well, actually, I don't want to check something. I want to do something. So now if I am below this altitude and the system is armed, then I want to disable my head tracker. Well, how do I do that? Well, I want to center my head track servo. I want to center that pan servo and just lock it there so it doesn't respond to any movement from my goggles or any input from the head track channel, which I have set to channel 12. So what I want to do now is I want to override that channel. So let's look for override RC channel. And I want to override channel 12. So we just put 12 here. And I want to set it to its center position, which would normally be 1500, but I think it centers at 1570. And this line, this logic condition 4, is dependent on logic condition 3, which is dependent on logic condition 2, which means 2 and 3 both need to be true in order for this to even be evaluated. And when it evaluates this, it's going to assert a 1570 microsecond pulse width on channel 12. So let's save that. And now we can see if I arm this thing, it activates both of these conditions. So now my pan servo should be centered. And how do I know this is the center value? Well, if I go back to the outputs tab, remember we configured the pan servo here. 
with a midpoint. And I've got wider min and max points than the normal 1000 to 2000 range to give it a little more rotation. But 1570 was the midpoint there, so that's what I want in my programming tab to center the servo. Now, if I were an iNav developer, I would love to create a simple scripting language that looks something like basic, that you could write this in code so it would be readable and easier to maintain. As it is, this is kind of clunky. If we want to create a new logic condition, it gets confusing what conditions are dependent on what conditions, and it's unclear as to what is what here, because I've got two different things that I'm checking for, but it just looks like one block of code. I can't like segment this off and comment it saying this is for to override arming safety, so I can't disarm in flight, and this one's for disabling the head tracker when I get below a certain altitude. So if I ever become an iNav developer, I would like to clean this up to make it simpler to write this kind of code. But anyway, this is the extent of the programming interface here for defining these logic conditions. There's a lot in here you can explore. There's different switches and conditions that you can check and different actions to perform. So if there's something that you want to do custom that iNav doesn't support out of the box, this is where you come to do it. And you can break your brain in here. So let's not linger here any longer. We're done with the programming tab. So now we can move on. So once again, let's not forget to disconnect.